Okay, pink slime. We're going to get into this a little bit here. I was at the kind of a dinner table or lunch table. Anyway, it's just a discussion table with some friends over the weekend on Sunday. And there was discussion about this pink slime. I'm like, what the heck? What, you know, pink slime in our ground beef? Un unbelievable. What the heck is pink slime? Anyways, um, my first was impression, oh no, not another one of these anti-food industry type things. But, um, but anyways, you know, so, so I just brushed it off as just a, just one of those type of things. And, um, but anyways, the next morning I got on cbnnews.com, which is one of the, um, 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 websites I like to get on a lot. And, um, and they had this pink slime video about, almost, you know, almost two minutes worth of how terrible our food is and so forth. And so, so, um, but then there's a little link off to one of the, the leading company, the leading company or companies who makes the, this, this pink slime. And I got on their website, and they have some five videos down at the bottom. You go to their YouTube site, which I'm on right now. And um, I'm going to let you listen to their response to this. Um, I just realized they also, I didn't check this out yet, but they have a website called Get the Facts on Pink Slime at www.pinkslimeisamyth.com. And, um, and in this video, they, they have a chance to respond, they're going to respond to Food Inc., which was a documentary one of these documentaries that uh, tend to um, um, uh, build a build a case around um, things like this, and so, anyways, this was one of the companies in which they went into their factory, and and here BPI, which is Beef Products Inc., uh, responds to a portion in which they visited their factory, and concerning pink slime and and the feelers that are in some of the the beef. I guess. Um, so anyways, so before you go too crazy on one side of the story, check out beefproduct.com, beefproducts.com, and check out their response. And then um, let your mind do the wondering. I'm just going to give you the response at least. I'll give you both sides of the story. We'll take it from there. Here you go. Here's um, the first video that I saw on their YouTube site called Food Inc. was wrong on portraying lean beef. And we'll push play. Here we go. In the documentary film Food Inc., BPI allowed the filmmakers inside to take a look at what they do. When founder Eldon Roth was discussing the use of ammonia in their facility, the filmmakers chose to show this image. In the video, there's a large porthole with a lot of water splashing behind it and a light. And that is a picture into our refrigeration system for cleaning the air in the plant. The water that you see in that picture is the water that we use to clean the air. Um, that's not ammonia, and that's not anything that's in our product. Near the end of the BPI section of the film, text appears over a shot of the beef in a shipping carton. Quote, the finished product, hamburger meat filler that's been cleansed with ammonia to kill E. coli. End quote. We know the cleansed with ammonia depiction was wrong, so what about hamburger meat filler? Well, first off, BPI's product is not filler. BPI's product is, in fact, lean beef. You know, a good example of filler, think about making meatloaf. Well, you take breadcrumbs and you take ground beef and end up making two pounds of meatloaf out of it. That's what filler is. BPI's product is lean beef. It, it is 95% lean beef. When the production crew visited BPI, they were given an all-access tour by the founder of the company, the man behind the entire operation. He answered their questions, shared what BPI does, and why they do it. Eldon's always been very open about letting people come in because he's, you know, I mean, he has nothing to hide. He's very proud of, of what he's put together and, and the technology that he's implemented uh, and the contribution that he's made to, to improving the safety of, of beef. So, of course, he'd want people to come in. Uh, but to come in like that and, and, and utilize, you know, listen to what he's telling them, but with, obviously, a, a, a hidden agenda, uh, is, is a really deceptive thing to do. People like those that created Food Inc. have a certain objective in mind. And it's an objective that I think more consumers should be aware of to understand the context of the information that they're providing and the manner in which they're providing it. Um, it's disheartening to see how they portrayed the plant. Because again, I've been in the plant and I had a very good experience in what I saw in terms of the assurance that I felt I needed as a mother, 
as someone who was also a policymaker at one time. Okay, we're going to stop it there. We'll go on to the next video here. And Food Inc. So much. Or at least that portion of Food Inc. I just thought throwing a little special effect. Anyways, now we'll get on to the response to Jamie Oliver, who mischaracterizes lean beef. Um, apparently he's on ABC um, in a show called Food Revelation. Revolution. I've never heard of it, but um, here we go. Let you listen to that R response to Jamie Oliver. On the ABC television show. Oh, we got a slow internet connection here. What is going on? No, food revolution. Chef Jamie Oliver did a show segment on beef. He gave his thoughts on what cuts of meat he thought were good and which ones he thought were bad. Oh, we got technical difficulties here. To illustrate his point, he introduces the audience to something he calls pink slime how does he separate which is is good for uh, consumption and which is not uh, I mean does he know the biochemical makeup of those two different products it didn't sound like it uh, in in the clip because um, he talks about how some lean beef is good for consumption and some some is it based on what uh, you know I didn't hear him explain that and it's because there there is no explanation for what he's saying. What the BPI process does is separate the lean meat from the fat. And it's, it's the same type of idea as ground beef. It's not an intact steak. It's not a, a New York strip on the plate. But it's really no different than the ground beef that you'd buy. To suggest to parents and children that we're essentially feeding our kids dog food is outrageous. And he should be called out on it. Jamie. Well, for some reason, the internet's been a little slow right now. I have no idea as to why. But anyhow, that gives you kind of a little bit of a response to Food Revolution. And the, now the video goes on for about another minute. Then moves on to the subject of ammonia and its use in beef processing. In his demonstration, he takes household cleaner and pours it on the beef. Well, well, he purports not to know percentages or how it works. He clearly demonstrates he doesn't know how it works. Um, for an intervention to be effective, it has to be dispersed at, at very precise levels. That's how it's approved as a processing aid. And it has to be evenly dispersed throughout the ground meat. And, you know, it doesn't involve a washing machine and a jug of ammonia. Uh, ammonia cleaner that he's gotten out of the household cabinet. That's not how this works at all. And, you know, it, this is kind of one of those, it's all just scare tactics about what goes on. What he did in that video was, was use something that looked like household ammonia for cleaning, which is a completely different product than what we're talking about. I and mean, we're talking about a, an ammonia gas, and it's a very small amount that's uh, applied to the product. So his show is not... Science, it's entertainment. Uh, and he got great entertainment value out of that, but it's very misleading. If the public is, is misinformed about science, technology, and food, and if the public turns away from some things that could help us advance our, our food system, uh, that in the future we will suffer because of that. Okay. To find out. Now we'll go to the. Last one, ammonia in foods, which is pretty interesting. Um, something I didn't know, you know. Why is ammonia in foods, you know, kind of thing. But apparently it's in a lot of foods and more in other foods than beef. So let's, let's check this out. At least the claim is here. At least this is their side, side of the story. So. What does ammonia have to do with food? That's a strange question, right? I mean, 
Why in the world would ammonia be a part of the food I eat? Well, we're glad you're here. When most people think of ammonia, they probably think of household cleaners. I'll bet you can smell it in your mind, can't you? Ammonia exists in many products, and household cleaners are merely one of them. But there is so much more to ammonia than you may know beyond products. The fact is, your body produces about 4,200 milligrams of ammonia every single day. It's a natural component of all plants and animals. Oh boy, this ain't working out so well. Hey, as you can tell, I'm having problems with our YouTube, our connection here. Um, and so instead of let, uh, letting you listen to the last YouTube on my, this video here, I'll just let you check it out yourself. Go to beefproducts.com and there's five videos down below and check out the one that talks about ammonia and foods. And then you'll see why a bit of ammonia. Yay! <laughs> ah, how silly. All right, take care, guys.